Hey, hey, hey. hey. Hello. Welcome, welcome to Women Cocker Business. I'm Jen McFarland, joined by Shelly Carney. Yes. And I am so excited for this month. We are talking all month about productivity, time management. It's in that like streamlined processes lane of what we have in our intro. So without further ado, Shelly, what's up? What's up? What's up this week? Um, so yesterday, my husband has celebrated his 60th birthday. And we were talking about, remember when we thought 60 was so old? <laughs> and now we are there. Uh, I'll be 60 in a couple of years. And uh, it's just like, wow, crazy. <laughs> so I don't know it's, how you I feel about know. being 60, but. Uh, uh, well, old. I'm not 60. <laughs> um, so I don't, uh, I don't be there someday. <laughs> You'll be there someday. someday. Yeah. But when my grandparents were in their sixties, they were so old. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, and I, yeah, I'm staring down at like 50 and I'm thinking, oh, mm, God, that used to be like ancient and mm. <laughs> now I don't feel quite the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all right. So, um, um, what else is up? So along with old age comes health issues. So I'm having an MRI for the first time today. Uh, I just, I don't know what's going to happen, but a lot of people keep saying, oh, you're you know, they go in this tube and it's really, uh, and you're loud yeah. noises, bang, bang, bang. And so what is your experience with MRIs? Yeah, I've had, as we talked before, I, I've had a couple. I've had the open ones where that's not quite as closed in. And I've had the ones where you go all the way in. I mostly just ignored the noises and closed my eyes and tried not to think about it. You know, I don't really like (laughs) closed spaces. It's not really my thing. Living abroad for a while and being in like cramped spaces, I didn't enjoy it. And Mm -hmm. I was fine. I kind of went to my little happy place. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking a lot about meditation and stuff. And I think I was able to just kind of do that, you know. Yeah. It's easy. Lean on that. Sure. So, yeah, I have some kind of weird growth going on that doesn't belong there so we're going to check that out see what it is and hopefully get enough information to do something about it (laughs) i mean all i'm saying is if sigourney weaver walks in you've got some concerns (laughs) i'll be at the hospital if they could they can handle it (laughs) (laughs) they get some lasers going on or something (laughs) what else is going on oh we i have an interview tomorrow with vince Warnock of Chasing the Insights uh, podcast. So I'm excited about that. He's had some really in- interesting and um, somewhat popular guests. And uh, he said he's even got uh, Brene Brown uh, coming up on his show. So I'm wow, like, that's cool. Whoa, am I in the same company <laughs> with Brene Brown? That is awesome. <laughs> of course you are. That's great. It that's is. awesome. I was excited. And it Uh, sounds like you're looking for some more people to interview for your series on digital marketing. That's right. We're going to interview Vince. We've interviewed you already. So, uh, but we are looking for more digital marketer experts, digital marketing experts, especially in email marketing, uh, relationship marketing, things that we haven't really covered yet. Um, Even the different social media platforms, we've done LinkedIn, but if somebody is an expert at Instagram or Pinterest or one of those, we're... uh, we're looking forward to speaking with you as well. That's yeah. awesome. Well, in my world, the only, I mean, like it's just nuts over here always, but what I am most excited about is uh, my business partner, Gail said, you're having a lot of neck problems. Maybe you should try this pillow. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm a little saucier today. Cause I actually feel like I got some really good quality sleeve, but my neck isn't killing me. So that's my main thing. Um, it's called the dreamy pillow. And, um, it's, a uh, yeah, it's really cool. So dreamy pillow, dreamy pillow. get yourself so, a dreamy pillow. This is from gross pork. Not sure. Says I've had a few as well. Speaking about the MRIs because of pituitary adenoma had a near panic attack the first time. So I think that's yeah. why it's a really good idea to, to talk about these things and get your fears, you know, expressed yeah. before you get there. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you for being so honest about it and sharing yeah. that. And I, yeah, I agree. I don't know if your name is Gross. Um, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, but that is, yeah, I, I have heard about people having panic attacks inside, and it's a, it is what happens. The, it's closed in spaces. A lot of people don't like those, and mm-hmm. that's the thing about the MRIs, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I had I used to go to a uh, a little spa thing uh, place, and he the the machines there were kind of like you would lay down on them and pull the cover over the top of you, so uh, like a red light therapy or there were different therapies, and you were in, kind of inside, but you had control over lifting the lid or not. So that oh, got me yeah. past that uh, feeling confined and and claustrophobic is I could always just push the push the lid up yeah. myself. So yeah, pop the hatch. Yeah. <laughs> that that control helps a lot. Totally. Totally. So what do we have for breaking news, Shelly? Breaking news. Guess what? Uh this is International Women's uh History Month and International Ooh. Women's Day is coming up on next Tuesday, the eighth. Yep. And I'm just gonna share my screen <laughs> with the world here. Um, if you're interested in learning more about International Women's Day and getting some resources, uh, you can go to this it's, uh, internationalwomensday.com slash resources. And they've got all kinds of great things in there. And they talk about the theme for um, this year, which is hashtag break the bias. Break the bias. Hashtag That's right. break the bias. We you were. know, this is so cool because when when I was in Peace Corps, International Women's Day was a tremendously big deal in Kazakhstan. Mm. And I was reading this morning about how the things going on in Russia and Ukraine are really affecting mm. people. And one of the women said, my husband bought me a vacation for International Women's Day and we're not going to be able to go because oh. of what's going on during the war. And I was, you know, o over there or, you know, and so it was interesting to me because, you know, here we don't, we have Mother's Day, we have, you know, all of these other days. Um, but when I was in Kazakhstan, it was like the school basically, like, I wouldn't say it shut down, but like, it was a huge celebration day. People were bringing in flowers to their teachers. And I mean, it was like showering people and women, in, you know, in your life with like all kinds of affection. So I am really heartened to see that like it's starting to get more attention here because in 2004, I'd never even heard of it here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I love that there's resources. Um, Break the bias is a really big um, issue that needs to be talked about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, in conjunction with the Supreme Court nominee, um, Katanji yeah. Jackson. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's going to help us with the breaking of the bias, you know, and the uh, breaking of the glass ceiling and, and just saying, Hey, why not have everybody <laughs> on the Supreme Court be a woman? What's, you know, if it can be, oh, everyone can, can be a man, why not? <laughs> everyone can be a woman. I know. And just, I can hear like the gnashing of teeth from here, I think. Um, just need just, to think of those things and break I know. those biases, I right? Know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and recently, you know, we've had a lot of things happening for women recently. The women's soccer team, uh, you know, fought and, and it took, I think, like seven or eight years and fought for equal pay and, and got it. You know, uh, yes. with you know, so it was. It's a really big deal. <laughs> what, Considering know, I mean, they were winning cups and trophies, <laughs> and a and, lot of people, and oh yeah, yeah. Um, and financially, they had been bringing in a lot of money as well. Uh, you know, the argument has always been like, well, the men bring in more money, and I'm like, not mm, in soccer, <laughs> not in soccer. You know, no. so it's interesting. If you want to learn about an important. A woman of color who is a businesswoman who you, I think it's likely many of you have never heard of, but I think she's one of the most influential businesswomen in American history. Her name is Effa Manley, and it is an episode of a profile that I did on the Women Conquer Business show a little over a year, wait, two years ago, the pandemic time, like <laughs> two years <Yeah>. becomes <laughs> like one. Um, and it is, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, and it's a profile that I did on Effa Manley. She is the only woman who is in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. She was an owner of a Negro League team and ran it and then was very influential in um, ending segregated baseball um, for a long time. African-Americans weren't allowed to play Major League Baseball. And then after the Negro League went away, um, after segregation was over in baseball, the, the league closed. And then she became um, really influential in civil rights. And so I did a whole profile on her because I felt like more people needed to know about her. So uh, something that 
I think Shelly and I are exploring is if, you know, we could do profiles like that about business women in the future. So yeah. if that's interesting to you, uh, please let us know. And we would love mm -hmm. to hear from you about that. Absolutely. And again, that's uh, Effa Manley's episode that Jen did on the Women Conquer Business podcast. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's called Successful Business Women History. That's right. Um, and I think it's called the Tenacious Effa Manley okay. is actually the episode title. That's the URL is Successful Women because it was like a successful business women in history. So, awesome. So yeah. check that out and we will have that link in the description. Okay. Yeah. All right. So happy Women's History Month, Shelley. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Let's be happy. Let's be happy. <laughs> so uh, the other breaking news to share is that Instagram is discontinuing IGTV. Uh, mm -hmm. That was kind of their long form video. It was always a little difficult, I thought, to work with. Um, I What I'm hearing, and I'm sure you're hearing it as well, Shelly, is that, um, you know, just look for them to make changes to, you know, their Reels product mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. I think is going to happen. Um, but who knows? Um, so if your business is reliant on Instagram, IGTV, you'll probably need, you've probably hopefully heard about it. <laughs> and you'll have to do something different instead. Um, that's one of the reasons why it's good to have a platform of your own, like a website, so you're not completely reliant on uh, social media tools. All right. We've got a request here for... It would be great if you could do a show based on the women in hidden figures. Oh, that would be great. That's yeah. a really great idea. Thank you so much. Some yeah, let's brilliant women. And let's that. do that because when we planned the shows for this month, we didn't. <laughs> we thought that there were four weeks, <laughs> and there's actually five. <laughs> That's and right. We're trying to. We're trying to find. We were trying to think of somebody that we could talk about as a profile for the last week. So I'm going to make a note of that right now. Um, yeah, so that we can do that. That's a great idea. Um, and if there's somebody in particular from Hidden Figures you want us to talk about, go ahead and let us know. I have to go back and watch the movie that. and then we can kind of like, yeah. Oh, man. That you know, and it's, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great story, great movie, the way that they fictionalize mm -hmm. it. And then the real, the real life stories are even more phenomenal, I think. Um, yeah. From, yeah, because I did some read, I saw the movie and then I was like, oh, and I started mm -hmm. reading about uh, many of the women in that film and everything they had to go through. So that's a that's a really great idea. So we'll look at that. So look look for that episode then at the end of the month. Yes, yes, Oxford. because awesome. this month we're dedicating we're talking about productivity um, for the first four weeks, but then we'll have a profile the last week. <laughs> How did they thrive in that environment? <laughs> I have no ideas. Incredibly, they, just, they have drive beyond. <laughs> all understanding <laughs> drive and resilience oh, yeah. I think it's I think it's both I mean it's a lot of resilience I think to be in an environment that's so hostile mm. openly hostile mm -hmm. um sadly and yeah. um but yeah that's a yeah that's a great idea thank you thank you so much yeah, absolutely so Good. are we ready to break yeah. into the training topic yeah let's do it Let's, Let's talk about it. productivity. So, Jen, what is productivity? So, th so this was interesting. Uh, we were talking about it before the show, and I, you know, we're talking about productivity this month. I was like, wonder what like Merriam-Webster has to say <laughs> about productivity because I always like to check myself and my own assumptions about it. So, in the super nerd dictionary definition, I thought this was really interesting. It's about how it's about the amount of input it takes to get to an output. So if you think about it in terms of in the business context and why productivity is important in business, then in the business context, you could look at it as how much time or energy or input does it take before I can get a product to market, before I can deliver a service, whatever the thing is. And then I think too, since we do talk about marketing, <laughs> I do think too, then it's also then including like the marketing piece of that. So I think, especially if you are a solopreneur, work from home, small business owner, I think productivity is incredibly important in business. It might be the most important thing if you really are looking at, you know, how long does it take for me to deliver services? Like that's really what um, 
so many of us are are trying to master, right? Is like, how do we do that faster? How do we make it better, faster, more efficient? So there's uh, efficiency, time management. I mean, I think there's all these different like buckets of, of, I don't know, influence that you can be focused on to kind of make service delivery productivity quicker. Mm-hmm. Well, that reminds me of something that I was, I've been working on recently is I need a checklist for myself to do certain things. Like uh, for this show, there's a certain set of things that I need to do be pre-production, during production and post-production. And so I went to the trouble of writing them all down and making a checklist. So then as I make the checklist, it reinforces this, then this, then this, then this. And that makes this project complete when I finish all of these tasks. And I've put that into, um, you know, a little program called Chaos Control, which I'm trying out to see how that works. It forced me to try some, you know, to, to write it all down and to focus. And I think it's super helpful, especially if you're starting any kind of a new thing, to have that checklist, to write it down for yourself and then to check it off and and work with that as you're learning, the, learning that process uh, until you get it, you know, ingrained in your brain. And then, you know, you do it every time the same way and it becomes yeah. one thing instead of, you know, like, it's like when you're learning to type, when you type a word, you think of each letter, but <laughs> after you're good at typing, you see the word, you type the word, you don't even have that thought process anymore. Right. But to get to that, it takes some practice, takes some memorization and uh, knowing exactly step-by-step step what it takes to get there. Right. You know, and as you were talking, I've, we will circle back to chaos control at some point because that just like, I was like, oh, it's a program. Like, you know how I am. I'm like software, <laughs> you know, uh, but it reminded me. So like checklists and chaos control reminded me of some something that I became aware of fairly recently that I have joined and I'm probably going to not be a member all the time, but it's mostly to get the materials and then adjust them for myself is there's a a place called click minded and it's for like they do a lot of like digital marketing stuff and they have like click minded sops like standard operating procedures and they are all just like exactly how to do it so like mm -hmm. you could have a checklist of like i need to do all of these things and then you could have your standard operating procedure for like and here's what the windows look like you know like this is like if i'm putting in you know, a podcast show, or if I'm putting together a blog, you know, here's, here's step by step, like what I need to check and what I need to do. And click minded has a really good set of that for, uh, for, I think, solopreneurs and, and, you know, small businesses who are taking on some of the digital marketing themselves. And then for professionals like me, it's like a good starting point, if you're going to hand off how to do things to somebody else. So yes, absolutely. Uh, so we'll put a link to that that's in the wonderful. as well. Yeah. Um, Very helpful. I, you know, I think that is, we talked about overwhelm and eliminating overwhelm last week. And I think that right there, uh, that type of a checklist or, you know, a process that you can follow step by step is a great way to, um, fight that overwhelm and say, you know, yeah. I've got this. I have it all mapped out. I know exactly step by step what I'm doing. Absolutely. And then like, so the other thing too, is you can hand things off then to somebody else if it's written down, if you've recorded mm -hmm. it. Like I had this moment and I emailed you, I saw in your newsletter that you had an MRI today and I was like, oh, what time is that at? Am I doing the show by myself? <laughs> Which is ridiculous as I've, I did this show by myself <laughs> for like two years, but it's like, we've now got this new like system for how we're doing it. And then I was mm -hmm. like, am I going to be able to like do all of the things like we're on StreamYard. I'm not used to it. I've kind of mm -hmm. let Shelly take the lead on like, well, not kind of like completely let Shelly take the lead on that. And you know, all of these other things. So I was and like, you should, you cause know, we're partners in this. Right. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, are you going to be there? And then she's like, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I was like, Oh, I, I will <laughs> warn you uh, when I have to stop being here, but I don't think it's going to happen because Toby is here as a backup. If uh, you know, Kevin should need to go to the, doctor or something and it's 
when I'm supposed to do a live show, Toby's volunteered to take over on things like that. So I don't think I'm going to have to miss any shows. But but uh, if I do, yeah. I'm going to tell you several weeks in advance, and we're going to go <laughs> step by step <laughs> how to do everything. All I'm saying is it's good to write this stuff down. <laughs> So then we can do it. And like, so you don't freak out, do. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's things that I do after the show, you know, that's when I really take up my part and like, and so anyway, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's all kind of fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, so write it down because then it keeps that, like when I just said, like, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like it keeps that from happening. Like if mm -hmm. you know, oh, well, it's all written down. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Keep a checklist. I kind of got like some things. And that's why productivity is important in business because then you're just kind of like, you're making it quicker to deliver goods um, to the end. Meaning like we deliver the podcast done. Like, and we know exactly mm -hmm. what we need to do checklist. And um, that's an interesting uh, definition because I'd always kind of imagined that productivity was not about how much time something takes, but more about how many things can I get done in that length of time. So what do you think of that? I mean, that's how I've always looked at it too. Yeah. You know, but, it, but if you look at productivity from that definition, then, then you could look at it as like, well, I'm doing all of these things. Do I have to do all of those things? Like it mm -hmm. kind of like, do you know what I mean? Like it's kind I of do. a different spin on it a little bit. I think both definitions are completely valid. Like I don't mm -hmm. see any problem with, <laughs> you know, like we're just exploring here all the different things that you could be looking at. So I think both the definitions are valid. I was just, I always like to look at what the dictionary says because sometimes like, it's just mind blowing, like how off base, you know, the, the common vernacular is for like what the historical definition is. It's the English major. It's I'm broken. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No, I think it's, it's <laughs> very important to to start that way so that we all know we're on the same page. We all have the same, we're all working from the same definition to, right. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things when we were talking through like productivity as a potential topic for us that I thought was really fascinating in terms of what you do. And I was hoping you could speak to it because I think it's critical also for why productivity is important in business are the non-negotiables. And so can you run us through what that means and then what how that w plays out within your workflow on a weekly basis mm -hmm. so i think one of the most important things we can do is to uh, have an awareness and analyze the things we're already doing and what's the roi on that is it important uh why am i doing it you know it does it does it fulfill a personal need or is it bringing in money. And just like the Pareto principle says, you know, 20% uh, of your activities bring in 80% of your income. So what are those 20% activities that we should really be focusing on? And Toby and I talked about email marketing yesterday. And because of the ROI on email marketing, that is one of those things that fits into that 20%. So I make sure that I send out, um, an email newsletter every Tuesday. That's a non-negotiable for me. Every Tuesday, must get out my weekly email. And then I've added other things that are uh, related to putting on a live show. So every Wednesday, I do a live show with messages and methods. Every Thursday, I do this show with you. And mm -hmm. then on Thursdays, uh, if I'm available and not at the hospital doing an MRI, then I do a show with Toby <laughs> on Video Tarot. So those things are my non-negotiables. Uh, and they have to happen on a certain day and some of them at a certain time. And then there's other things that I just want to get done sometime this week. So it's not as time sensitive, but it is something that, you know, is a step on my way to a particular goal. So we have, these are my non-negotiables. And those can also be, and because when we were talking about this, then I chimed in and I'll, I'll do it again with like, these can also be non-negotiables in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I was listening to this really fascinating, I don't have children. I was listening to this fascinating article on, I have Apple news um, from, it's thing is from like Elle magazine of, of all places. They're talking about how the blurring, particularly for women who don't have children has happened in career since the pandemic. And I was thinking about it in terms of this show, which is, you know, which is to say that women who don't have children are working at a phenomenal pace because a lot of people are like, well, you're not a parent can you take this on? And it kind of adds up a lot. Um, you know, and, and one of the, mm. the stories they had was somebody who was in a production meeting, I think it was in marketing 
and she was in the 11th hour of like a call and she like passed out in the middle of the zoom call um passed out cold and as she was like passing out she like shut her computer and then woke up like in a pool of her sweat you know and everybody's like this is like the thing that horrors you know horrors are made out of you know horror shows and stuff so when I was thinking about that, part of the non-negotiables also have to be your life and yes. how much, you know, you know, if you're, if you have a partner, how much time are you spending with that partner? If you have children, how much time are, <laughs> how much time are you spending with your children? Uh, if you, you know, whatever, what hobbies do you have? What, what things are you doing? And I think that those can all be non-negotiables as well. Um, for someone like me, I think it's important to, to, to have, life and business non-negotiables mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise the business as someone who has two businesses <laughs> like the business is always there and is always like encroaching so I think it is important to say you know I'm gonna have a date with my partner every couple of weeks or I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. or I'm gonna do that but I love the idea of having non-negotiables it sounds like and I, I bet your chaos control a lot of different apps do this generate like here's your to-do list for this week mm -hmm. do you have something like that so that like you actually know, it does it like, every day and then if you didn't get it done yesterday it'll just carry over and then it'll also say also available which is things that are coming up later in the week <laughs> and if you get everything done and you have more time and you can work on those then then go ahead so it yeah. it kind of keeps you like oh you know i don't have anything else to do today let me go netflix you know oh, well, look, I could be working on these things and get ahead. <laughs> then when I have, you know, a busy day, Thursday or whatever, then I'll be ahead. So it kind of keeps you aware of, okay, here's where I'm at. Wouldn't here's that be what nice I still to need be to do. Ahead. You're so fun. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> well, it's to decide, you know, um, because especially for somebody like you with two businesses, which which thing is the most important? What do I absolutely have to get done? That's why we're talking about non-negotiables, right? Yeah. Can I, can I make, I'd like to make a confession right now. I really don't like email. I'm not talking about email marketing. I personally do not, <laughs> do not like answering emails all day. And I, so I found to be perfectly frank that now that I have even more demands on my time, because I don't enjoy email, it's become less and less and it's dumb. Like it should be right up there in the priorities. So sometimes non-negotiables aren't necessarily things that are fun. Like we've been talking about things that are fun. They can also be like, you know, reminders to do things that maybe you don't enjoy that you put off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's something that you deem must be done, then you have three choices, right? You can either, uh, do it yourself and try to find the fun in it, or you can delegate it, have somebody else take care of it for you. Or you can say, um, it's maybe not that important. I don't know. <laughs> take yeah, it and look yeah. at it. Is it really a non-negotiable? If can I, I never make it? time for it, is it really yeah. a non-negotiable? Yeah. But if you feel like yeah. it's absolutely has to be done, then you find a way to do it and make it fun or you delegate it. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and I wanted to talk about something that I learned as a way of doing things. Now, I may not stick to it all the time myself, but it's uh, these people were teaching you get rid of your to do list, right? Yeah. So, what you do is you write down everything you need to do and then you plug it into your calendar. You can know, say, okay, I get it. I have to go for a walk every day. That's going to take me an hour. So I'm going to plug it into my calendar every day at the same time. Or I need to uh, write an email every Tuesday. I'm going to plug that onto my calendar. And during that block of time, that's what I'm working on. So if you open up your calendar, it should be pretty well full of all the things that you plan to do that week. And that's going to keep you in control of your schedule. And then when people come to you and say, oh, can you work on this for me? You can open up your calendar and say, let me see if I have any free time. And you may or you may not, because as, as you keep your calendar scheduled with what you need to get done, then you have just, you know, you can just look at it and you say, yes, yes I have or time no. or no, I don't. So that's, that can yeah. be really helpful. And you have to stick to it. 
And that's kind of, mm-hmm. that's kind of where it breaks down for me sometimes mm-hmm. is I, yeah. sometimes I am too nice and I'm like, well, okay. Like, and then, and then, you know, invariably it takes longer than I thought or, mm-hmm. you know, things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, which and let's goes, talk about that. I was going to say, let's talk take about that. Longer than we thought they should take. Right. And the yeah. problem can be that uh, when we don't really say, you know, I'm only giving my, give myself an hour for this email and, and that's it. And then we go over it too often. Then we have to go, okay, this does take two hours. Am I willing to spend two hours on this project? Uh, Yes, no. And um, because, but if you just leave it, oh, sometime on Tuesday, I got to get it done. You have this, this big empty space. And guess what? (laughs) That task is going to take that whole day (laughs) because you gave it that whole day to get it done. It's going to take as long as you give it. Well, and I think that part of that is, goes bleeds into like the the one of the other things we wanted to talk about is, you know, what are you currently spending your time on? So yeah. you might say block out. And that's the thing about the time blocking or like putting those things in your calendar is like you might say, I'm going for a walk every day. Is that really what you're doing? And is it really taking an hour? And, you know, like so so it seems to me that part of it is an awareness of how long things are actually taking, because mm-hmm. for some people, they're not even aware they're like, I'm just always behind. Like, there's not a lot of awareness around what those um, break points are, like in your schedule or your day or what it is that's actually taking longer. And I think part of it is just raising that awareness around like, okay, so what am I actually doing? And that was part of, that was actually one of the things that, you know, if you've listened to this show for a while, that like kind of brought me back into doing meditation and reading like, you know, like you're reading about stoicism, I've been reading a little bit about it too, is just the idea of like raising the awareness around like (laughs) the actuality of the present time versus like kind of this ideal landscape that maybe I've crafted or thought about, you know, I mean, that, that I've like created for myself. So it's, uh, it is important, I think, to say, what are, what am I actually doing if it's not, And you don't even have to do that even if things aren't going well. In some ways, it's better to do it when things are going well. Because then you're like, oh, okay, I can just repeat this, you know, Mm -hmm. and 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 that's that's actually where the gold is, because then it's like when things are going well, you can just keep doing that and write it down and and all of that. Um, When things are not going well, sometimes we tend to (laughs) get stuck in the mud. Yes. Yes. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't have time to meditate. And then the meditation teacher says, then you need to meditate longer. (laughs) (laughs) And it sounds counterintuitive, but when you can clear your mind of all that extra uh, busy craziness and you can be calm and focused, then you can get so much more done, right? Right. And whatever it takes, for some people, it's meditation. For some people, it's yoga. For some people, it's going to church. I mean, whatever it is for you that can help you let some things go, um, increase your awareness around what you're spending your time on, what things are actually like in your present time. Uh, I think the more effective you can be when you're working on those (laughs) non-negotiables. I don't know. Do you agree or is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, definitely. Um, there are, of course, I was listening to, and for, since we're talking about International Women's Day, and we are women, and we work with women, uh, one of the things we need to be aware of is our hormones. And, and the, there are certain times of the month when we can be more focused, when uh, we are more social, there are, uh, when we can learn our cycles and, and what works for us the best, then we can take advantage of that as well. And we can schedule out our month in a way that says, yeah. okay, in this, you know, here's a good time for me to do network. And here's a good time for me to really focus on getting my book written or whatever it is that you need to, you know, create your course or whatever it is yeah. that you need to work on uh, with full focus. So as women, we need to be aware of those um, cycles and hormones and, and how to stay in balance and how to use those to our advantage. Absolutely. So, uh, 
one of the comments that we've got is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I am still currently working through this one and I love it because it's so manageable. It's one of the things that is fantastic because it really is breaking things into manageable pieces, understanding that like if we focus on really big things all the time, then we may never achieve them and it's very discouraging. <laughs> Mm. And I, you know, I, this is a, have you read this book, Shelley? I listened to the audiobook a few years ago. Yeah. I, okay. Reading. Yeah. I'm, I'm listening <laughs> to it. Like oh, I, okay. I consider that reading. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So this is a, this is another really great resource. Um, thanks um, for bringing it up. And um, yeah, so it's, there's whatever works for you is really the key and sometimes those atomic habits, those can be like kind of encouraging and things that you can be doing to really, you know, tackle those those to do lists and and be more productive in throughout your day. So um, did you want to talk about the 20 percent? You kind of mentioned mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned the 20 percent quickly. Well, I think but... it's it's kind of dependent upon your business, your business model. What are the top priority activities that you need to get done in order to bring in income. And uh, for most small business owners and entrepreneurs, that's having uh, those sales conversations. So booking all of those sales conversations. Um, but then you have to say, okay, how do I get those bookings? So you kind of have to analyze what's bringing in your money and what, you know, what steps are involved in, in, in getting to that step, uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that one important thing. Um, so again, it kind of varies for most people, but the sales calls for entrepreneurs are usually the main thing we need to get to. So that 20% of activities is getting you to that sales call and having that sales call. Um, everything else is yeah. just keeping your business from, you know. Which is really <laughs> at the, yeah, I mean, I think that's really at the heart of like the definition of productivity really mm -hmm. is like, if, if you need people in your pipeline <laughs> to make money and like to deliver services, then, you know, how many inputs are you doing to drive that activity to happen? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's, that's the thing, like, what are the 20% that things and then, and then the more you can shine a light on that, the better it is for you in terms of being effective in your work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to look at, okay, I have, you know, these many client calls this month. How did I get those client calls? What was my most effective method for bringing those in and making those happen and then converting to uh, clients? And that is your that's the core of your business, right? It's making those sales. Uh, and you got to keep, as you said, you got to keep that pipeline full. So you have to do all the things that are necessary to get to that sales call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that has yeah. to be a system that you set up so that you can be productive every day. You're always working on something that adds to that system. Absolutely. And I think in the beginning, you may not know what those things are. And that's actually one of the key reasons why keeping track of what it is you're actually spending your time on is important. If, if you don't know what did it, if you don't know what it is, then how do you know to do more it of it? It was magic. <laughs> it was magic. And yeah, so it, it is about like how, you know, how do we, how do we make that happen? How do we focus on those most important tasks and it is about being aware of what's working what's not working what do i like to do what do i not like to do can i delegate the things i don't like to do like just to bring it all kind of full circle uh the 20 percent is is really the, the critical the critical piece it's kind of where the the rubber the rubber meets the road yeah so you said that you don't schedule activities you mentioned the time blocking, but you said you're not doing that. What are some of the other ways that you know people are more productive? Do you have any other tactics? Like, I think this chaos control is great. Um, I've been playing around with things three. Um, that's another another way to kind of like manage your checklists and your productivity and set those reminders and, and all of that kind of thing. That's an Apple product. Um, there are certainly apps that help with that, but 
you know, and using your calendar app to do that is also helpful, helpful as well. Um, what are some other ways that we can be more productive? Do you think? And well, if I you're think, watching, go ahead and let us know too. Yeah. I think one of the things is having a routine. Um, mm -hmm. There are certain things that I do every morning, you know, this, then this, then this, then this. And one of them is uh, writing in my journal. Mm -hmm. And I kind of force myself to do that because I, it makes me feel like I'm more organized if I get my journal done. And it's only a couple of paragraphs, you know, so it's not something that's difficult, but it pulls out that junk out of my head so then I can focus on the rest of the day. Um, I know with Toby, he's got a morning routine where he gets up and he makes his bed and he does his um, his rubber band stretches, mm -hmm. which keeps his back and shoulders healthy so that he doesn't experience pain. I know a lot of people need to do things like that uh, to keep, to maintain their health and maintain their physical fitness so that they don't get into feeling unfit and in feeling pain. So those are important things to make sure you incorporate daily. And then once you have gotten through your morning routine, you know, then you start your work day and, and maybe then you have, you know, certain yeah. tasks that you have to work on, like, Mondays is LinkedIn newsletter, Tuesdays is email newsletter, you know, um, and I fit yeah. it into the rest of my life. I might need to go grocery shopping on Monday, so I'll fit that into my <laughs> schedule too. Uh, some things have to be at a certain time and some things just have to be on a certain day. So I just kind of <laughs> move it around as I need to. What do you do? Uh, you know, it's funny. I was, as you were talking, I was reflecting on the fact that if you are if you are so we have somebody who's listening or listening or watching today from work and says that's kind of productive that's why i that's why she's I multitasking <laughs> and uh, my name is jen it says hi shelly hi guest yes uh, so, <laughs> actually um, jen jen is the uh, founder of women conquer business yeah so. so you know listening today from work and that's productive kind of so i was kind of giggling at that but i was also thinking about for people like well like many of us who worked for a long career and in an office setting and then started working from home what you're talking about the routines i think is really important i think it's really key is like you have to formulate whatever it means to you whatever that looks like and it's different for everybody um you have to have at least some kind of structure in your day like it's really good to have my day begins at this time my day ends at this time here are the reasons why i could potentially work late you know clearly define that then have also what you know what are those routines that you need to do? What are the things that I have to do to feel good? What are the things I have to do that I, you know, that will make me more productive in my day? Like what works well? Um, and I think that all of that is really how you, you know, put yourself in the best position to win. Whatever winning mm -hmm. looks like, I think it's really important. Um, and those are the scheduling or the activities that we do repeat mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh you, you and I both know Brendan Bouchard, and he wrote a book about uh, habits as well, and uh, high performance habits. And he did uh, worked with a team to interview very high performing people and find out the things that they did uh, in their lives to make them a high performer, somebody who achieves great things. And one of the things was having that routine, you know, having that yeah. morning routine. Um, and then with he works in time blocks, but he takes a five minute break every hour. Every hour, he takes a five minute break. I'm not good at that myself, except not I have to get up and go to the bathroom. Okay, you know, and I just have to go right now. So, but I don't plan those like <laughs> every, you know, 55 on the hour, 55. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go, you know, run up and down ah, the stairs or whatever. That's a great idea. And he feels like that. Uh, gives him way more energy throughout the day. And that even at the end of the workday, he's still got more energy than most people who've worked yeah. really, really hard focusing and not taking those breaks. So I, I'm giggling too, because I just, and I turned my head because I was like, I think I have that book. I haven't read it yet, but I, <laughs> so maybe, or maybe I should. Uh... I think that's on audio as well. So <laughs> on my bookshelf. Um, but yeah, that's a, 
Um, that's a really, that's, I like that, you know, and I, when I first started my business, I think I was just screaming for that structure that I used to have. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, and I became fascinated with like morning routines and, and things like that. So, um, I love reading that so that I can see, um, Oh, what is the Pomodoro technique? Oh, I can talk about that. Good. You do that. <laughs> and there's actually a video on the the Women Conquer Business uh, YouTube channel that kind of goes through it. Mm. I made that like years ago. So the Pomodoro method, I really like it. It's a form of deep work that is very compressed time. And I still do it sometimes. So you can go to like tomato-timer.com and there's other places like that. So they are like 20 or 25 minute blocks of time. So it would be the time where you would take your phone out of the room and you would clear all of the distractions and you would say, I'm going to work on this one thing for the next 25 minutes and then I'm not going to be interrupted at all. Um, and then when the timer goes off, it, you spend, um, you spend five minutes away. So kind of getting back to what you were just talking about, like you spend five minutes on a break um, and then you can come back and do it. Now, what they have found is that the, that you can only, if you're not used to doing that kind of high intensity, like compressed time work, that it can be really hard on your, your system. <laughs> like, you know, so mm -hmm. some people go into it and think, oh, I'm going to do 10 of these a day. And it's like, that's not really possible, you know, um, but the technique is really good if you have a short period of time and you really need to do something, or if you're like me and there are things that you really don't like to do, um, like email, <laughs> like spending 25 minutes and just being like, this is the only thing that I'm going to do. I'm not going to browse anything. I'm not going to do anything else. And you'd be amazed at how much you can really get done in that amount of time. Uh, if you have this like dedicated time to deep work. So, um, so that's the Pomodoro technique at a high level. Um, and then we can give you the link to the other YouTube uh, video in the show notes um, to talk about that. Cause I, I think I, <laughs> I think I described it in a little, not, it's not very long, but like in a little more length there, uh, but it is highly effective for some people um, and it really works. And we need to keep an eye on uh, multitasking. Now, in the case of I go on a walk and I listen to a podcast at the same time, that's multitasking, but that's something that's manageable and, and easy to do and, and, and enjoyable as well. But if you're trying to multitask or, you know, you're like, okay, well, first I have, and, and this is what happened to me on Tuesday. Uh, first, I have to get this show scheduled. That means I have to do this Canva uh, piece and then I have to schedule the show and then I need a title, I need a description, I need, I need all these things. And then I can do the newsletter. Um, doing all of those things wastes some bandwidth and switching back and forth between tasks uh, has been shown to uh, reduce your productivity greatly. So yeah. if you can do your work in these block times, first I need to do this, then I'll do this, and then the next piece. And then you can focus deeply on each piece rather than kind of you know, being a little too scattered, you're going to save some time, you're going to get more done, and you're not going to feel so stressed. Absolutely. And, and as uh, Gross, Gross Pork, he yeah. said, call him bacon, because <laughs> everybody <laughs> likes bacon. Oh, really? <laughs> see the avatar is bacon. No, I, didn't, I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it says, you know, unfortunately, I can't work um, and think at the same time and listen to a podcast. That's me. I, mm -hmm. um, I me tend too. to listen to something. Um, I listen to brain.fm. That's, that's something that I listen to and it help. It's just biurnal beats and, and it like kind of helps with that because I can't yes. listen to words. So everybody's like, well, what are your favorite podcasts? And I'm like, I don't listen to like a ton of podcasts because most, you know, if I'm not working, you know, if I'm working, I can't, listen to shows mm -hmm. at the same time. So mm -hmm. I'll listen to a couple shows while I'm cooking dinner you yeah. know, or going for a walk, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I can't do it during the day. So, um, so, but some people can, or they say that they can, um, but it's to your point, you know, they say that like when we multitask and stuff, our brains are actually like a light switch. And so, right. 
it goes through like all of this like processing, you know, when we switch to something. And then that's why sometimes it's like, why can't I get back into this? And it's like, well, literally your brain is just like, what did you just do to me? Like, and, yeah, <laughs> you know, and then, you're right. It's like a switch <laughs> and you're like, okay, now I'm doing this. And, and then to yeah. get to a new activity, there has to be this buffer, like, okay, now I'm not doing that anymore. Now I'm doing this. And your brain works that way. It's, it's just, yeah. unless you're, uh, you know, kind of neurodivergent and you can handle that, uh, most of us can't. <laughs> yeah. They said like 95% of us can't. Yeah. So, and it's amazing to me how many people think they're in the 5%. <laughs> I'm not. That's a lot of people. I, I used to think I was, and I'm like, yeah, no, that's, no. that's not true. Um, I'm so glad that Lorraine is enjoying this topic. And yes. I love that we've been getting a lot of comments. This has been really great. So, uh, yes. rem you know, we are live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain. Uh, mountain mm -hmm. And then wherever else you are in the world. Um, thank you for being here. And I think that this probably wraps up our training component today. Do you think? I feel. I think so. I feel like we've we still got to talk about this for another three weeks. So. Now, if you would like to know my system for live streaming weekly, putting out a live stream a podcast in a blog, you can go to the Messages and Methods YouTube channel. We have a playlist on there called Livecast Life, and we go through each part of our system and why it works and how it works as a system. So check that yeah. out if you're interested in that. Absolutely. And we'll put a link to that in the show notes, um, which are will be available um, on the podcast platforms and then also at womenconquerbiz.com. But yeah, you'll want to go there because there's just so many great tidbits and pieces of information there. So definitely go there and check it out. And uh, before we wrap up, so what do we have for, we have tweaks. We have tweaks two, of the week. Tweaks of the week. So what is, would you want to start off with the. Well, Jen the, and I had a conversation on LinkedIn <laughs> in the comments about uh, how do you, how you add an embedded podcast episode to your LinkedIn, LinkedIn. article. Right. I did an article. Uh, I do one every Monday. It's a newsletter, basically, that LinkedIn allows me to write a newsletter and send it out to all my contacts who are subscribed to it. And luckily, each week, more people add are added to my subscriber base. So I'm very excited yeah. about that. Um, but what you can do is take your Spotify link for your podcast and put that into your LinkedIn article and it becomes an embedded player for that episode. Yeah. And the great thing is, so so we're podcasters, so we look at it from the podcasting lens. But if you had music or if you appeared on somebody else's show or, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it you can add a SoundCloud player or a Spotify player in the podcasting world, Spotify is way more common anymore, I think. Mm -hmm, uh, but yeah. there are a lot of musicians who use SoundCloud mm -hmm. um, or if there's clips. Um, I think that I think it's great. I And I didn't know that it happened. Somebody posted it and I like was like what tell me more and like reshared it and then I had commented like Shelly did you know this and so you tested it right you did it yeah this week so yeah yeah it looks so cool. cool I like it I'm and the cool it. thing is the it's the uh, episode from messages and methods that you are on so it, <laughs> it gets oh. got your face right there <laughs> I guess I'll have to go share it <laughs> there you go uh the other uh, the other tweak of the week that I have uh is there was a, it's on AppSumo now. It's a lifetime deal for $89. And I missed it the first time. It's called mm. Studio Cart. It basically adds a cart to your WordPress website so people can buy like courses and, and different things like that. It's an alternative to ThriveCart. It's only for WordPress. I've been testing it and it's been really great. And it integrates with all different kinds of membership platforms, other plugins on WordPress, you know, we're using it at Epiphany Courses to integrate with Teachable uh, so that we don't have to have a billion zaps anymore. It, it's going to be great because we can actually delete all of those zaps. Mm. And and so anyway, if you are trying to figure out if you've I had a client who was adding products using Stripe with, <laughs> and then selling them through their WordPress website. Those things can take a lot of time and a lot of hassle. And what I love about Studio Cart, as opposed to ThriveCart, which I also have ThriveCart, is Studio Cart is beautiful. Like they make these beautiful sales pages and, and 
opt-in forms and things that are really beautiful and wonderful. And I've asked a couple questions and they've been getting back to me. So that's called Studio Cart. Um, again, it's not very expensive in, in it's like $150 a year um, for, for people, um, or you can get it forever with a one-time payment of $89. Now, I don't know how long it's going to be on AppSumo. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes, but if that's interesting to you, um, then you'll definitely want to look at that um, while it's there. Um, and that's, those are the tweaks. Yeah. And Two for one today. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, and then um, inspirational nugget. Inspiration. Well, it goes along with our, uh, our time management, but take a look at your calendar for the week or the month and, and look at it and say, how many things on my calendar bring me joy? Am I doing things that I love that make my life better? And if you're not seeing very many things, start adding them into your calendar and then become accountable for them. Okay, so I want to go to the park, let's say, but I'll put it off if I'm not accountable. So maybe I want to meet somebody at the park, maybe a friend and I will walk around the park every other week or something um, so that if I'm now accountable to show up at the park to meet my friend. What is on your calendar or what is missing from your calendar that can bring you that joy? Because it can, it can, it can come to a point, especially for entrepreneurs, where all you're doing is working and you're not finding any joy and it's no fun anymore. Life is just not fun. So yeah. you have to do this for yourself. Find some joyful activities, plug them into your calendar, then make yourself accountable for them in some way. Maybe uh, I love to live stream. So I schedule three live streams a week, you know, and I'm there and I'm having a good time. And, and I set this particular live stream up with Jen, Women Conquer Business, so that I could see Jen every week and we could talk and build our relationship. And it's wonderful. And I don't, personally, I don't care if anything else happens because I'm having so much fun anyway. So yeah. look for those things in your life that you can plug into your calendar and then make yourself accountable for them. Absolutely. <sighs> That feels really good. I love that. No, I just love, you know, I mean, like the tagline for my business is, you know, you know, bring joy into, you know, marketing your business. And it's like, yeah, you want to, um, you want to do that in your life. Like, yeah, you know, you don't want to work all the time. And, and that's certainly something that I've been aiming to do a lot more of, um, for sure. So with that, I think that we're going to close for today. Okay. So thank you so much for being here everyone we love the comments we hope that you've really enjoyed today's show if you're listening please consider tuning in at 10 a.m or emailing us your questions at um you know i have my contact form on at womenconquerbiz.com there's a million different ways we're both all, all over social media <laughs> so you can find us uh please send us your questions we'll be talking about productivity all week and, and all month. um Oh, all month. Yes, all month. <laughs> Every week, all month. <laughs> Every week, all month. So um, yeah, just have a great week, everyone. See you next week. Yes. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business Podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.